Hello everybody, Moneybag73 here. Tonight I'm going to do something a little bit different. I have an article and I'd like to thank Martin for this interesting article that he submitted. He's a columnist for the Globe and Mail and the title is Silver Bears See Cloudy Lining in Metals Prospects. So I'd like to do a video response to this and I'd like to pose a question to all of you first. I'm going to I know you're quite capable of reading this yourself down below, but I want to give some commentary along with it. It's real short. Maybe take us like five minutes here. Uh, but I think it's important because there, in the article it says that the bulls are, are um, they're missing the mark. You know, something that they don't understand. Well, I think there's something that the bears don't understand. And in the middle of this article it states exactly what I think the key point of this article is that that shows that the bears don't understand really what's happening so um, yeah, I like to pose the question what's the purpose of this article and if you could leave a comment below I mean I'd or leave comments about you know the article as if we were discussing it got some Beano here help me decipher this article So here we go. The average price for silver reached a record high of $35.12 an ounce last year. But this may be about as good as it gets for gold's low budget cousin. Okay, well, first off, I thought that was $49 and change. Um, but, you know, that's just a minor little thing. Just we'll, we'll skip that. Some market watchers are warning that silver faces a vicious bear market that could eventually take the price to the mid-teens. A scary come down for current investors. Yeah, real scared of that. Being loading up on some real cheap silver. <laughs> Feel like you got a fistful of 50s on $5 a night. Considering silver has been changing hands around $29 level. So, the bears are still a minority, but they worry that silver's price surge is prompting growing mine output at a time of sputtering industrial demand. Well, if you saw my last video, both the U.S. and Canada are now producing less silver than they're selling in, in uh, you know, investment coins or in, in one ounce silver coins to preserve wealth. And they both dropped in half their production over the last 10 to 15 years. So, what's this, you know, what's being said here is not what I'm seeing. I mean, can someone help me out? What am I missing? What data am I looking at that in this article that they're, you know, they're not looking at? And we're going to hear from a couple of professionals. And it looks like they're looking at different stuff than what I'm looking at. They should know better than me. I'm, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a. Um, senior metals analyst. I'm just someone who has a passion for economics and precious metals and you know thinks I have I think I have an idea what's going on, but according to this I have no clue of what's going on. So anyway, let's continue here. Investors have to sop up the resulting surplus of metal. Otherwise prices have nowhere to go but down. Well I didn't know there was a surplus of metal. If you Google Silver Institute supply and demand You'll see up, they only have up until 2010. It looks like what's being pulled out of the ground is 200 million ounces less than the demand, which is being made up by melting down 200 ounces of scrap. But that's what I've been looking at. But, you know, the, Martin here, he, he's not looking at that. I don't know what he's looking at. Um, silver prices have gotten so high, miners are digging holes wherever you can find, says. Ned Schmidt, publisher of the Value View Gold Report. Okay, well, what good's that do when silver is coming out of the ground is like 70% a byproduct of other metals? You know, there's not a lot of pure silver mines. You can't just start, you know, digging wherever you want, just pulling tons of silver out. I don't know. To me, that sounds kind of ridiculous. Mr. Schmidt says that he wouldn't be surprised to see silver fall to the low 16s or to low $16 an ounce level. 
Silver has got a cloudy lining, says John Nadler, senior metals analyst at Kitco Metals, who shares a negative outlook for the metal. To be sure, not everyone holds a downbeat view. Some big-name Canadian investors, such as Precious Metals Maven, Eric Sprott, chief investment officer of Sprott Asset Management, have publicly said that they believe silver is poised for a big rally. A key industry figure highlights the problem. According to the Trade Association, the Silver Institute, hmm, I was looking at their information earlier myself, the average cast costs of silver mines covering items such as blasting and ore and hauling it away worked out to a mere $5 an ounce in 2010. Less than one-fifth of the current market price. This is true. I've always heard 5 to $7 about what it's costing to take it out of the ground. Even including other outlays such as head office expenses and, and depreciation of mining equipment, companies are still coining money at current prices. Meanwhile, supplies of silver scrap from recycling and other sources such as melting of old silver tea sets and coins are surging in response to the high prices. You know, the way this is written is, we've got all the scrap being melted down, added to a huge oversupply. Now take note here, silver is a commodity. We can't forget that. Don't forget that. In a lot of ways, it's, it's no different than wheat, corn, or soybeans. Now, I mean, that's obvious, right? I mean, wheat, corn, and soybeans, they're all store of wealth for thousands of years, right? Well, maybe wheat. I think they did find wheat stored for thousands of years, but soybeans? I don't know. Maybe they store your wealth for thousands of years. I don't consider silver and gold like these other perish, you know, these other commodities that you eat. Uh, maybe you can. You can make a case for them lasting thousands of years. I don't see storing my wealth in wheat, but anyway. You raise the price high enough, people will produce it, Mr. Schmidt says. So sil silver's just like these other things. If wheat goes high enough, you're going to see a lot of wheat fields. Well, if silver was high enough, you're going to see a lot of silver mining. Well, that's kind of funny. Did, did Mr. Schmidt not know that it takes five to ten years to bring a mine up to full production? I don't know. Maybe he's seen that information? I don't know. At the same time, industrial demand is running up against the problem of a slowing economy. Compounding the long-term downtrend in usage from photography and silverware, one bright spot has been the increasing use of solar panels, right? But even that industry is starting to slump. Despite the weak industrial fundamentals, the... Hold on. <laughs> I need a sip of wine for that one. Despite the weak industrial fundamentals, silver prices have managed to stay aloft because of huge rise in investment demand. Good point. From speculators, hedge funds, and metal buying ETFs. Okay, that's interesting. That's, that's where Martin thinks all of the investment demand is coming from. Speculators, hedge funds, and buying, okay. I think he's missing a big part of it, like maybe you and I, I don't know. Um, the Silver Institute late last year estimated investment demand reached 10 billion, up from 1 billion. But, you know, this is all paper, uh, according to the article here. Okay, so I'm gonna have to speed this up because it might get more help from the wine than I actually initially wanted. But, that doesn't matter really. I mean, you and I know what's happening. We know that the cost of production being so low is not going to cause, cause some huge surplus that's just going to force the price down. I mean, the fundamentals, here's near the end, the fundamentals are as doomy and gloomy as possible. But capitulation, I don't think, has happened. All I see is the bulls in denial, he said. So you can check this out for yourself if you want. I guess Eric Sprott billionaire investor, obviously done quite well for himself. He's missing the mark. He's in denial. I'm in denial. Everyone's in denial. Everyone I follow is in denial. I just, 
I can't believe this. Please tell me why this was written. Was it to try and help people so they don't miss the boat? Well, what's funny is if, if the people listen to this, they don't miss the boat. I'll tell you why I keep smiling doing this, people who may not know me very well. Because I know where Silver's headed. And if we can get it in the teens, you know, <laughs> wow, what a sale price that's going to be. You know, I've done my research two years and three months I have documented on YouTube of my research. And Silver's headed one direction. The key to this whole thing is right in the middle. Silver is a commodity. We can't forget that. Like it's the most important point in the whole article. Well, that's the most important point why the bears don't understand what's happening and the bulls do. You know, we can't forget it's a commodity. Yeah, but let's just forget that silver was used more often than gold for longer periods than gold as real money over the past three, four thousand years. Let's just forget that. That's what they're missing. There's no mention of the dollar here. There's no mention of you know, all the paper printing that's going on, how it's going to force everything up. Nothing. It's just silver's a commodity and there's a huge surplus. And, you know, if wheat prices go up, they plant a lot more wheat fields, so they'll mine a lot more silver. Whatever. Just, oh my God. Please help me. <laughs>